camera crew and church members gathered at a house around midnight, creating an odd scenario. The entire action was filmed. In bed, the person had a remarkable vision. Two angels appeared, recalling a previous experience. They held the person's hands and said, Rise, for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords awaits you. The person woke up to find their body still in the room. Walking, they extended their hands to the angels as they quickly ascended. They entered heavenly presence in seconds. Angels sang Hallelujah, Holy, Holy, creating a joyful atmosphere. They saw a beautiful garden in God's kingdom. The Lord said, Beloved, I have awaited your arrival. There is much I need to share with you. I am here, Lord said. I wish to remain with you and not return to earth. Please let me stay. The Lord said, My child, you have tasks yet to complete. Your work is not finished. I will reveal something significant for your life, for my people, and for humanity. I seek to save all souls and ensure none are lost. Angels Michael and Gabriel delivered huge, dazzling scrolls. The person wondered, what did these scrolls contain? Jesus asked, would you like to see what's written? Yes, Lord, he says eagerly. Michael, reveal the scroll, Jesus said. Michael unfurled the scroll and saw golden numbers with unknown meanings. The person asked, what is this? He said, these inscriptions represent the names of those on earth who have embraced the Lord as their Savior through your experiences. Overjoyed, they wondered, how many are there? Michael revealed hundreds, which moved the person to cry. Lord, so many have been saved, they grieved. He said, Behold, Gabriel holds the record of those who were once distant, but have now returned to me. The number was large, so the person said, Lord, this means my crown should be adorned with pearls, and I might be allowed to stay here. Lord gently corrected, No, my child, your journey on earth is not complete. Would you like to see your crown? With anticipation, the person said, Yes, Lord, I would love to see it. Gabriel presented a large tray with a gorgeous crown, but few pearls. He asked, Lord, whose crown is this? That is your crown, my child, replied. But Lord, why is it not filled with pearls despite so many souls coming to you? He said, You still have much work ahead. Only 3,500 souls have been welcomed into my presence. You must continue to spread my word because many more souls need to find their way to me. The person asked, Why can't I stay? The Lord said, The crown of life must be fully adorned with pearls. He pledged, I will fulfill your mission. The Lord responded, there is something more to show you. They suddenly dropped from heaven into a gloomy, tunnel-like region like hell. Oh Lord, what is this? The person said nervously. Jesus said, I have new things to show you in hell. But Lord, I don't want to be here. You've already revealed much to me, he said. Yes, my child, Jesus said, but you need new insights. As I descended into the scorching abyss again, the heat was unbearable and tears fell. Torment was nearly terrible. I said, Lord, please, help me. I can't stay here. Rescue me. Among the cries of, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Help me, please. Give me another chance. One voice stuck out. It said, I ask for your forgiveness now, Lord. I have stolen from you. Forgive me, for I do not want to commit this sin again. Lord, who is this person? Why does he claim to have stolen from you? How can anyone steal from you, Almighty God? I inquired, curious and disturbed. God said, My child, I will reveal his story. We entered the man's cage and found a hideous creature writhing in pain. As flames flashed around him, I realized that everyone in hell had plaques on their chests and 666 on their foreheads. He begged, Lord, forgive me. I said, Why are you here? What do you mean by asking forgiveness for stealing from God? How is it possible to steal from him? He said, I was a Christian leader for 20 years. I knew Christ intimately, but during those years, I misused the money from tithes and offerings. I claimed it was solely for the pastor's support. Now I regret my actions deeply because I realize it was meant for the Lord. That's why I say I have stolen from God. He said, even now, many people on earth are committing the same error I did. When you return, tell them not to steal from the Lord through their tithes and offerings.
No thief will enter the kingdom of heaven. I knew the scriptures, but I now understand the gravity of my sins. He said, Tell the people to give to God with sincere love, as instructed in 2 Corinthians 9-7. Malachi 3-8 He begged, but the Lord said, It is too late. There is no further opportunity for repentance. I said, Why did you rob God despite knowing that stealing from his tithes and offerings was wrong? He said, I knew, and I ignored it out of pride. Never steal from the Lord. When we give our tithes and offerings, it is not for men but for the King of kings and Lord of lords. As stated in Malachi 3 to 8:10, You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes, the whole tenth of your income, into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and prove me now by it, says the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. If you desire God's abundant blessings for your life and your family, never steal from Him. It's time to bless God so that He may bless our lives. The Lord responded, I will now show you something different. As we left the terrifying scene, the Lord reminded me of a vision He gave me in November during my second experience. In a great insight, I learned about Arvier in hell. This old Italian or Latin phrase occurred in a 400-page text picturing a horrific hell. I didn't understand it, but its religious implications were plain. Jesus led me to those cells again. Once inside, I saw thousands of people, including two black-clad women. I asked Jesus, who are they? One of them was a nun, which broke my heart. She held huge snakes forming a crucifix and rosary. Shocked, I questioned, what is this? Why are they here? The nun said, I was a nun on earth, but now I find myself in this place. As she prayed, a snake constricted around her hands, releasing hundreds of worms. Jesus told me to watch and listen. The nun wailed, O oh Lord, I cannot endure this any longer. I want to escape. Please help me. On a spectral screen, the other woman's story revealed hidden facets of their life. I saw nuns having unsavory relationships with priests and other sins. They regretted deeply, but their fate was sealed. Nuns begged, tell earthlings not to come here. Purgatory is a myth, regardless of whether prayers can rescue souls from it. Men created it, not God. The Bible mentions heaven and hell, not purgatory. Jesus showed me both places but not purgatory. He told me purgatory does not exist. Tell people to make their decision while they are alive or while there is life. There is a chance to repent. Many pray for their departed relatives to escape purgatory. Those who died without Christ are in hell and cannot be saved. This is hard, but if they died with Christ in their hearts, they are with God. It breaks my heart to see how many are deceived about purgatory. Simply said, purgatory does not exist. You must choose now whether to spend eternity in heaven with Jesus Christ or hell with Satan. The Lord told me to speak clearly. I'm following his command whether you agree or not. All of us will answer to God one day. Without repentance and abandoning sin and idolatry, hell awaits. Trust Christ for eternal life. This is not to intimidate you, but to inform. The Bible says thieves cannot enter heaven. Each saint or renowned figure's portrait or statue hides a devil the Lord revealed. While outwardly innocuous, statues of the Virgin of Guadalupe, the Divine Child, and others often attract demons. These figures allegedly cure, yet evil forces are behind them. In the midst of miracles and benefits, the devil can trick people into worshipping false idols. The Lord showed me. He performs bogus miracles to keep you following him to eternal death. Satan wants souls to turn from Christ, who provides eternal life and abundance. The hell nuns I saw were sorry. When I asked why they ended up in hell, despite knowing the truth, one said, Yes, I knew the holy word, but I never repented. I never sought Christ. Many nuns end up in convents due to personal disappointments and problems, using the convent as an escape. In truth, they are serving Satan, not God. God's word is clear in 1 Corinthians 6 to 9 10. Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God.
Also, Revelation 21 to 8 warns, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Hellbound souls cannot escape. It is too late. Still alive, you can reconcile with God. Do not miss this chance. You may be hearing this on your last chance to repent and turn to Christ, who forgives you. As we left the cell, I cried, Lord, take me out of here. I don't want to stay. The Lord brought me out and said he wanted to show me more. A young girl cried, Help! Help! Who are you? Why are you here? I asked her why she was in hell. She said, I was just 15 when I died. I thought I had a lifetime ahead. People talked to me about Christ and salvation, but I always mocked them and rejected the Holy Word. I didn't believe in the Lord. Now I see the terrible mistake I made. I'm here in flames, regretting everything. I died in a car accident, and now I am trapped in this place, tormented by demons who say, You cannot leave. You are here for eternity. I don't want to be here. Please help me. I was devastated, powerless to aid people in hell during that horrible event. The girl begged me, please tell my family and the youth to turn to Christ and avoid this place. I wish I had listened to those who tried to save me. Now it's too late. As she was swept back into the flames, I felt her regret. I cried out to the Lord, Lord, how awful it is to be here. The suffering is unbearable. He said, there is no chance for those who are here, but there is still hope for those on earth. Go back and obey my command. Warn the people so they may know hell is real. I saw more of hell's torture from the Lord. Famous Michael Jackson was tormented in flames. I identified him by his white glove. Demons tortured him by making him dance and sing like on earth, but it was all a sham. Demons mocked him, throwing him into flames and beating him cruelly. The monsters ignored his agonizing pleas for help. I wailed and shouted, Lord, help him. But flames enveloped me and worms crawled. Demons' mocking laughter increased. They mocked, You are staying here. You belong with us. I felt completely alone. I was afraid because I couldn't feel God. Demons chanted, You have stolen too many souls from me, and now you are mine. I will destroy you. Their leader ordered, Take her away. Take her where she belongs. I trembled and pleaded, Lord, where are you? Why have you left me here? I realized how terrifying it was to be without him. Even in hell, I remembered his words, Go back and tell them the truth, so that they may not end up here. Hell is real and forever, and the Lord has given me the mission to warn everyone. It is no myth or joke. Hope remains for the living. Christ offers immortal life. In fear and doubt, I shouted, No, I am not staying here. The Lord is with me. He promised he would never leave me. Satan's voice boomed. You are staying here because the Lord has abandoned you. Look around, he's not here. I couldn't see Jesus, and a wave of loneliness washed over me. Doubt crept in. I cried and asked, Lord, why did you leave me? Why, Lord? Then I heard his calm voice murmur, Daughter, I am here. I boldly shouted, The Lord is with me. But Satan taunted, He's not here. Look again. Though I couldn't see Jesus, I believed in his presence. But the demons were growing closer, and a rope pulled at my waist drawing me toward that terrible voice. The voice said, You fool, you are a damn fool. I will destroy you because you have led souls away from hell. Stop preaching. Keep your mouth shut, or I will kill you. Despite my anxiety, I shouted, No, Satan, you will not destroy me, for the Lord is with me. I knew he was there yet couldn't see him. Satan's mocking laughter rang, and I felt the darkness pull stronger. I exclaimed, The blood of Jesus has power. I am covered in his blood. Satan will flee because greater is he that is with me than you. With conviction. Something released suddenly. My waist rope parted and blackness lifted. Finally, I was free in the Lord's presence. The Lord then told me, Daughter, I am sending you back with a message for my people. Go and tell them to seek me in spirit and in truth. John 4.24 Tell my people to live in holiness, to meditate on my holy word. 
not just to read it, but to scrutinize it, for apostasy is growing on earth. Many of my children, even my chosen ones, will be deceived. Tell them to seek my presence and to know my word, so they will not be missled. I wept and said, Yes, Lord, I will obey, but I need your help. Please help me, Lord. He said, Daughter, do not fear when you return. I will stand by you. I will speak through you to deliver my message. Many will rise against you, but remember, I am with you always as I promised. I am your faithful witness. Angels surrounded me then. I remembered Michael, the archangel. The Lord said, Michael will show you something. Gabriel stood at my side, and Michael held my hand. God said, Take her and let her see what you have to show her. We climbed a stairway greater than any I had ever seen. A large space with an altar and golden pulpit followed. I saw a big book on the altar as we approached. I questioned Michael, What is this book? He responded, Angelica, this is the book of life. Opening the book, I gently turned its pages. I said, What is written here? He said, This book contains the names of all those who, while on earth, have repented and turned their lives to our Heavenly Father. This amazing testimony emphasizes the importance of being in the book of life and repenting and serving God. Michael's statement about sparkling names reminds us that those who repent and seek God are seen in heaven with bright names, while those who turn away risk losing their place in God's kingdom. The words of Jesus remind us of his infinite mercy. Jesus came to forgive everyone's sins, and reconciliation with him is never too late. According to 1 John 1-9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful, and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God wants everyone to live. A passionate prayer to return to Christ is provided here. For anyone who feels distant from God or uncertain about their situation, repenting and asking for forgiveness offers comfort and certainty that God will hear and cleanse from unrighteousness. May the message prompt us to consider our spiritual life and whether our names are in the book of life and whether we actively pursue God. Jesus will forgive and accept us into his eternal kingdom if we confess and repent. Revelation 20.15 states, If anyone's name was not found recorded in the book of life, he was hurled into the lake of fire. This emphasizes the importance of our choices. This vision urges us to repent, seek forgiveness, and follow the Lord's ways with a true heart to keep our name in the book of life.